Welcome back to r slash just know HOA, where people share stories about their crazy homeowner associations that make us feel better about not living in an HOA. If you enjoy these stories, please feel free to tell me in the comments and without any further ado, let's dive right into the stories. And the next one is titled Uno reversed a Karen. I moved to a HOA neighborhood almost three years ago. To my dismay, it is very popular with the baby boomer crowd. I would say about 80% of my neighborhood was born between the 1940s and 1960s. My husband and I were born in the 70s and are a product of the 80s and 90s, so my husband and I have absolutely nothing in common with any of them. Which is fine, by, however, the majority of them act like entitled a-holes. We have tried to be nice and say hello and have gone to the neighborhood mixers. We get straight up ignored, a few things about my neighbors to set the story up. The neighborhood boomers have created a bullying social clique you are not allowed in unless you are at least in your late 50s and if you are not, you get frozen out. You are not even worthy of a wave or hello or any acknowledgement that you are a living and breathing human being. The boomers hate all kids, they sneer at my kids when they go outside and immediately stand up, go in their house and slam the door when I bring them outside. My answer to their behavior is to move into a 55 and older community if you don't like kids. One female boomer bragged, one of the few that deigns to talk to me, that she at least had a nanny when she was my age and did not have to deal with her kids like I do. On our neighborhood Facebook page they post the most insane and backhanded insults and dicks at each other, but follow it up with wink emojis and smiling emojis, as if we are all too stupid to figure out that you are straight up being an a-hole. There's always an affronted Karen complaining about behavior on said page. One of the most wildly a hole horrific boomer couples live across the street from me. When we moved in, the male boomer, whom I will call Joe, was so outraged that for the first six months we lived there, he would immediately go into his house and slam the door as hard as he could whenever we happened to venture outside. The female boomer, I will call her Karen, iced us out as if we didn't exist. Would not acknowledge us, look at us, we were just not there. Fine by me. One day at the pool last summer, a very friendly boomer named Betty introduced me to Karen. We were all in the pool on floats, I was watching my kids, Betty turned to me and said, Oh Veronica, I am Veronica, you have not met Karen have you? I informed her that I had not and said hello. Karen turned to me like something akin to the exorcist and said, Yes I'm Karen and I'm the biggest girl you will ever meet. Stunned, I just looked at her and went back to my kids, I don't entertain jackasses and since that day I have continued to ignore her and her nasty husband. Q last week, like I said we have a HOA neighborhood so there are certain bylaws and rules that must be followed or else you're going to get a warning and then find. I see that Joe and Karen have a screen and storm door company measuring the double doors for their second floor balcony. Little do Joe and Karen know, I graduated law school and before I was a stay-at-home mother, I worked in real estate law for 10 years. I know that they are not allowed to have a screen door placed on their door, it is against the neighborhood rules. Dumb, I know, but I didn't make the rules. But I figured this is my moment to finally get back at the most miserable, nastiest couple I have ever had the misfortune of living near. A week passes by and I step outside and I see a brand spanking new screen door on their balcony doors and they are loving it. They have both doors propped open, music playing and are laughing and just having a blast. I go inside and draft a quick email to the property manager citing the appropriate code in the declaration that prohibits screen doors along with a picture of their custom made screen door I sent off the email. After just three days of use, today when I stepped outside, their screen door was gone. I called my mom and told her that BITCH told me she was the biggest female dog. My ass now is. That cow should treat people how she wants to be treated because now every time you are in violation of anything in the neighborhood documents, my ass is going to turn you in so you can get a nice giant fine. It's a great day, it took three years of being treated like garbage, 
But I got me some karmic retribution against those miserable people and they have no idea who did it. Actually guys, that is a very interesting tactic that we have not seen too many times yet. This person basically used the HOA to her advantage to get back at her neighbors. Would you have done the same? Would you have gotten involved if needed with the HOA yourself? Let us know what you would have done in the comments. This one is titled The Most Insane HOA. Let me set the scene for you a little before I get into the actual transgressions that I need to complain about. This is going to be a rant because I just need to tell some people about this. I live in a pretty nice middle class neighborhood basically right outside of a larger city in the western United States. It is a newer neighborhood in the grand scheme of things and more houses are only just being built evidenced by an unfinished cul-de-sac down the street from me. There is a big old lake that sits in the middle of the whole thing where recreational activities occur, a small shop and go store and a bar. Those are the only three things that I would guess separate us from just being a purely residential area. Now we obviously have an HOA or I would not be here to complain. Set HOA is mandatory to join and I was happy to do so as there are no regular monthly fees which is something I had never experienced before. I thought that was a little strange but soon found out why they have it set up that way. The head of our HOA is an absolutely psycho person. If he dealt massive quantities of drugs and had <coughs> ended people's lives I would not be surprised in the slightest. If you simply have your trash out in a slightly askew manner he will fine you ten dollars. I am not joking it is the most petty stuff I have ever experienced. I have received multiple $10 fines for supposed rule violations. He is the type of person that drives a gigantic lifted truck because he's obviously compensating for something, he open carries firearms, he wears flip flops literally everywhere he goes, even in the winter. He once tried to pull over an actual police officer and detain them for supposed speeding. Him and the rest of his HOA buddies, who are all friends due to having a kid around the same age, all hang out in the aforementioned bar literally every single night like they are some sort of biker club and not a discount neighborhood watch. One day I had the audacity to question their fining methods at bi-monthly neighborhood meeting and I was met with accusations that I must be a Russian because this is how we do things here. I'm living surrounded by insane people. This is not normal behavior, correct? I am not going insane? And guys, let's just say, obviously this is not normal behavior in the rest of the world, however, if you live under the rule of an HOA, it actually seems to be quite normal. In addition guys, if you have watched until here, please don't forget to post some star emojis in the comments and also, let's try to reach 1000 likes on the video. That would be absolutely insane, but I'm not sure if we can do this, so let's see. And the next one is titled Neighbors Sue Man Over Outlandish Paint Job. I have just never seen anything like this. A gentleman from Florida is facing a lawsuit after giving his $500,000 home a makeover that some of his neighbors found unsightly and obnoxious. The house, located in an upscale community in Naples, has been redecorated with splashes multicolored paint across its exterior, including along the mailbox, garage, driveway and front lawn. Neighbors said the owner, Robert Lehman, spent around a week making the controversial alterations. Obviously has a drug issue or something going on, because I have just never seen anything like this in my life. Alan Clarence, who lives in the neighborhood, told a newspaper. It is unclear why Lehman chose to add the designs which includes a van in the yard that's been painted with waves of rainbow colors and has the words who is Omar written on its site but he's now facing a lawsuit for the decision. The Independent reported that the community's homeowners association has filed a lawsuit against a 40 year old saying he has caused thousands of dollars in damage and angered several neighbors. The painting, trashing and commercial vehicle are unsightly and obnoxious. A formal complaint from the homeowners association reads, there is a blue streak and red blotches of paint and spray paint on the house and trashed yard which is unsightly, obnoxious and not in the conformity with the neighborhood scheme. 
According to the complaint, the Lehman's van is in violation of a community rule that prohibits commercial vehicles from sitting in a driveway for more than 8 hours. I cannot believe it. I absolutely cannot believe someone would do something like this, Clevon said of Lehman's home. He obviously has something going on. I've just never seen anything like this in my life. In addition, Lehman is apparently currently facing drug charges and is due in court this week. Additionally, court documents obtained by The Independent revealed that the 40-year-old has been in a month-long dispute with his father, Dennis Lehman, over the home. Dennis had reportedly been attempting to force his son to leave the house and attend a drug rehabilitation program. If you want me out of this house, then they will remove me in a body bag, because I'm not leaving, Robert Lehman wrote to his father in court documents. You can explain the rest of the world why you have done this. And guys, please forgive me, unfortunately, from what I have seen so far, there has not been an update yet to this story, but in case I find one, I will either read it to you or link it in the comments. But once again, please remember, this is not legal advice, so I don't guarantee any updates. And this one is titled, I am a dummy and need to know what I can do to fix it. Okay, here we go, I win the dummy award of the year, but I need some help to see how I can mitigate my damage now that I am in the bind I am in. I bought a townhome, fixed it up and put a renter in it, small town, small HOA, 25 units, duplex units, just got a letter from the HOA attorney that they don't allow renters and I need to get mine out in a month or else. Number 2, when I bought it I literally just was not paying attention and never even asked for the CC&R stuff. I have bought several before and never really heard of any HOAs in my areas restricting rentals, so I just got lazy and lax and did not do my due diligence. But now I am in the bind and I need to know what I can do to mitigate it. I just got the letter and just contacted my attorney, who won't be responding because it is after 5pm. So does anybody know what my risks slash options are here? I don't think there's any way I could get the tenant out of the unit until the lease was up, 11 months from now, because of my stupidity. B. The attorney sent the HOA page with the clause about owner occupants only, but there's no reference to the penalty. Can they foreclose? And if so, then if the foreclosure takes over a year, but my tenant is out before then, would I be able to stop the foreclosure? Or sell the house before it was foreclosed on? My thoughts slash ideas so far, again, without legal advice yet, are... So first, see if I can tell the HOA that I am doing a lease option with the tenant and if that will work. I doubt that they would be okay with that and would probably fight it, but threw that out there for the attorney to advise. Number 2, tell the HOA what happened and explain that I cannot get them out until the end of the lease and offer to pay a penalty, 3 or 4k and see if that gets me through this. These are 140k to 150k units so 3 to 4 thousand dollars would be a nice number. 3. If HOA refuses to budge at all and wants to stick it to me, I could have the tenant sign a quit claim deed to where I sign a quit claim to quit claim it from myself to myself and them. And then have both of us sign a quit claim to quit claim it back to just me. That way I could file the initial quit claim so the tenant is on the deed and therefore an owner occupant. And after the year was up I could file the second quit claim deed and have them removed. I am sure there's some risk there, but I don't see that I would have any choice. Something like that would be better than getting foreclosed on. And I just don't see any possibility that I could get the tenants out early. I could offer them $5,000, but they are older and I don't think they will move. I think they will be furious, as would I, and would not do anything to help me out even if they made money doing it. I cannot say I blame them either. But again, it is a one year lease so they would be better off moving in 5 or 6 months and getting 5k or moving in 11 months and getting nothing. It is entirely my fault for not being thorough on this deal, the worst part is I did not even realize there was an HOA until the guy showed up at the house and gave my contractor his info. I called him and he said that he wanted to know about the unpaid HOA fee. What really blows is that I told the guy I was a landlord and had several houses in Beecher and that I already had a tenant at that place. The guy never said a word, he is the HOA president and was really nice too. 
I don't know if he just missed it or what. I don't think he was the type to try to create a situation, but had he said one word to me about no renters, I could have just flipped this thing. I even asked him to email me to restrictions, but he said he had to mail them to me. I don't think I ever got them. If I did, I never saw them. But I need some BP feedback here so I will be able to sleep at least a little. What can the HOA do worst case? Are there any other suggestions I should consider here? Can I officially be nominated for the dummy of the year on this one? I hate to make light of it, but this one has me pretty unnerved. I've seen just about anything and there's some fear here that I don't normally feel. And by the way guys, before we continue to the comments, I would just like to hear your feedback on these stories because this is not from Reddit, but from a different separate site. And they have legit true HOA stories that are, at least in my opinion, pretty interesting. So let me know your opinion about them in the comments. Either way, the first comment said, I am not a lawyer and this is not legal advice. You say you could have flipped, I think you could still fall back to that fast as possible, you could meet with the tenant and possibly work out a deal where they leave in shorter order. You would sit down with the tenant and try to work something out. It seems like you can afford up to 3 to 4k to resolve this, find a way to have them move out with some money in their pocket. Why pay the association? The association could take the money and your pissed off tenant still has to find a place in like 9 months and wrecks the place and stops paying you and the tenant family and friends get involved and do not move out in time and the market changes for worse and the association is fining you for stupid stuff. Another big thing is your money which is tied up on this mistake and the deal of a lifetime happens rolls by for you and you're not focused slash your funds are tied up. I am not a lawyer and this is not legal advice. Another person said, I personally would not go to the quit claim route, the intent is deception and not legally appropriate in my personal opinion. And by the way guys, indeed, I gotta agree with this, when OP wrote this, it seemed very dodgy and scummy, at least in my opinion, if I understood everything correctly. Anyway, the person continues, I would meet with the board and inform them that I would be removing the tenant ASAP, I would buy out the tenant, assist as much as possible in locating a new home for them, as well as assist with their physical move. The mistake would be entirely my responsibility and I would do whatever is necessary to comply with the HOA. If the tenants refuse to move I would file an eviction and hope it will be motivation enough to get them to reconsider moving. An eviction may not be successful but it may appease the HOA knowing that I have filed. Obviously I would expect to be facing fines but I would do everything possible to appease the board without any form of deception. And another person in the comments who is apparently an HOA president said the following. Putting on my HOA president hat, yeah, you are in a pickle and the outcome of this completely depends on who you have got on the board. If you have got some regular people, things could go one way. If you've got some self-important folks who are puffed up with their own power and ego, they will likely go another. Here is how I would approach this. First, don't have your lawyer contact them yet. Second, contact the property manager or the board president. Explain what happened, eat a lot of crow, call yourself an idiot if you want and use a lot of oh crap and yeah yeah I know, I should have done all of this stuff and I didn't and then apologize profusely. In addition, you should explain the scenario with the lease, explain about your elderly tenants, talk about what great people they are, let them know that you won't renew the lease, but talk about the illegality of just putting these people out of the street. Talk about lease breaches, etc. and how you are caught between a rock and a hard place. Also, you should offer to sign some kind of commitment that you won't renew the lease, put it in writing and get it signed and notarized. Boards love this stuff. The more you put in writing and make it look like you will follow through, the better. In addition, offer to finance or otherwise make possible some repair or improvement they want to do. Offer to renovate the signage at the front of the property if it is looking a bit tired or needs painting. Or plant flowers at the entrance or some trees, this probably wouldn't work with me, but it would for some people. Look at the last 6-12 months of meeting minutes to see if they have tabled repairs or improvements due to lack of funds. 
The meeting minutes are sometimes a good source of information to figure out the types of personalities you have on the board before you meet them. You are then very likely to have to go to the next board meeting. At that board meeting you will have to do the above all over again for the entire board. The board will then render their decision, they could agree that you are a buffoon and agree to what you propose, but they will demand that you then sell or otherwise do whatever is necessary to stop renting the house. I see no way that they will grant you any kind of permanent waiver. This will be temporary only. Or they will scowl and frown and stick to their guns. If this happens, then what happens next will be disclosed in your governing documents, but here is the likely scenario. First, you will be issued fines. The amount of the fine will either be in your covenants, your rules and regulations or occasionally the bylaws. If you cannot pull that out, then maybe be in a policy slash procedure document, which you will have to make a special request for. Number two, you will be issued very stern warning letters. They will get scarier as they go. Eventually you will get a cease and desist letter. In addition, after the cease and desist letter, you will be served with court documents, which will likely contain a motion to compel. Once this happens, you can either comply with their demands and then request a dismissal of the case or you can go to court. Once you are in court, the judge will likely then give you a timeline by when you must comply. If you don't comply, you will be held in contempt of court. At no time will the HOA be in a position to foreclose on the house or take your property. Probably double check with your attorney, but here in Colorado the HOA would not have that ability. The HOA can only foreclose if you are not paying dues or fines. We cannot foreclose if the issue is non-monetary covenant violations. So make sure all dues and fines are always paid. It is more than likely that all the letters, fines and court process will take about 11 months-ish to complete. So it could be that working through this way will just run out the clock. Good luck. And the OP in question actually responded, so my offer of $2000 to the HOA was enough to let the tenant stay through the full term of the lease. So now I don't have an HOA suing me and I don't have a tenant suing me. The tenant is now trying to buy the house directly so they can stay there. I would love to stick the HOA with these tenants and if they buy the house there's no way for this tiny HOA, something like 18 townhomes, to prevent them from staying. The HOA has been a pain in the butt to be honest. They complained about the number of cars, four, and the number of people. I told them there were four bedrooms and there was nothing they can do. The two older sisters live upstairs and had their own rooms and the one sister's daughter and her boyfriend are in one bedroom in the basement and her two kids in another bedroom in the basement. We will see if the tenant can qualify for a loan or not. If yes, then I agreed to sell the house for 145k. It appraised out at 160k. If not, then I will list it for the 160k or maybe even 165k because I think it is worth a little more. I think I was all in at 120k or less, so I will take the numbers. And the next one is titled, HOA representative delays apartment renovations costing apartment its warranty. So I am 28 male in Canada, I am working on an apartment in which we have had multiple meetings with the local HOA to get approvals for how the material looks, color, even how it goes together. I work in architectural sheet metal, so I won't throw a whole lot of jargon at you. Anyways, we have been working on this building for about two months, made it up to the sixth floor securing the cap metal with standing seams, wing clip and smash pins when the HOA representative comes out onto the scaffolding and promptly says, Take off all the cap flashing. I don't like the standing seams because it ruins my view and the view of the residents. Don't you know this is a luxury apartment? My boss and I both looked dumbfounded and I said to the representative, I'm sorry, but this is part of local laws on securement of the metal. If you didn't like this, this should have been brought up during the meeting with the architect, the head contractor. This building is as old as I am, clearly was not built to standard and if you are a construction worker like I am, you would clearly see it just by looking at the building's concrete. 
After the HOA representative left, we went to talk with the head contractor, in which he laughed his ass off. Told us not to worry about it, since the HOA is already into it for a good million and would cost them another 50k to remove the siding, take out our metal, pay for new metal, install it and then reinstall the siding to get it to the way he wants it. A day later we get a phone call from the owner saying that they are going to pay for it. However, the way they want it, absolutely no standing seams, is going to cost the building its 10 year warranty on the metal. Meaning that if anything happens after we leave the building, it is not our problem. Thanks for reading everyone. And a user in the comment said, make sure to send them this with the upgraded quote and let them reply with an assent first. That way, when it invariably falls off after 8 years or the first good storm, you can reply to the warranty claim from the insurer with the attestation. Or even better, involve the insurer that you are voiding the warranty on the work due to them not wanting it installed correctly and see just how fast a backpedal when being told the cladding now no longer is covered under the policy and they will be liable for any damages relating to it failing. Jesus Christ guys, I gotta say, those HOA law stories make my head spin. I really do not understand why would anyone want to deal with these HOAs if you don't have to. Seriously, I would rather live in a small apartment or rent a small apartment than live in a huge house in an HOA governed neighborhood. What about you? Would you prefer to rent a small apartment as opposed to owning a big home even though it is in an HOA neighborhood? Let us know in the comments. And guys, unfortunately, we have already reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed today's stories. And if you haven't already, please also go to patreon.com slash ripe YouTube, where I upload exclusive Reddit videos starting at just $3 a month. This is a great way to support me in case you are interested and the chance for me to become independent from YouTube revenue. Thank you so much for watching, please don't forget to subscribe and like the video and I hope to see you again tomorrow.